in this lesson we are going to talk about polynomial functions. We're going to be able to identify um, the names of the polynomials based on the exponents and the number of terms. We are also going to be able to identify when we have an even degree polynomial or an odd degree polynomial. So let's get started. When writing polynomials, in standard form, you need to ensure that the expo exponents go in descending order. And here's an example of descending order. So descending starts with the highest degree of an exponent and then the next highest, and then the next highest until you get down to the constant. So some examples of polynomials in standard form might be f of x equals 5x plus 2. Another example would be f of x equals 3x squared minus 5x plus 6. Maybe f of x equals 12x cubed plus 8x squared minus 4x. Or we could even have 4th, 5th, 6th powered. Really doesn't matter. We'll do a 5th power. 5x to the 5th plus x cubed plus 3x minus 7. So these would all be examples of polynomials in standard form because they start with the highest degree of x and they work their way down. So here's our first example. We have p of x equals 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 2x plus 5. The first term, which is 3x cubed, has a degree of 3. So the exponent of x is 3. The second term, negative 4x squared, has a degree of 2 because the exponent of x is 2. The third term, negative 2x, has a degree of 1 because that would be x to the first power. And then the last term, which would be the fourth term, which is a constant, has a degree of zero. So I'm gonna write that down. Constants are a degree zero. Now, degrees of polynomials have special names. When we have a degree one, we learned in Algebra 1 that that's called a linear polynomial, a linear function, a linear polynomial. We're going to be specifically talking about polynomials, and these are polynomials. So I'm going to may call it a polynomial instead of a function, but it means the same thing, hence the reason I'm using function notation. So a degree 1 would be linear. A degree 2 would be quadratic. And we just finished that unit on quadratics. And that example might be f of x equals x squared minus 5x. That would be a quadratic polynomial. A degree 3, degree 3 is called a cubic polynomial. An example would be f of x equals 4x cubed plus 2x squared minus 7. The highest degree of x is a 3, so that's going to be called a cubic polynomial. Degree 4 is called quartic. And an example of that would be x 
f of x equals x to the fourth minus 3x cubed minus 6x squared. A degree 5 is quintic. And it doesn't have to have many terms. f of x equals 2x to the fifth would be an example of a quintic. That means that the highest degree of x in the equation is 5. Quintic, 5. Quartic, 4. Cubic, 3. Quadratic, 2. And linear, 1. Now we can also name polynomials according to the number of terms that they have. One term is a monomial. So a very specific polynomial with one term would be called a monomial. This is an example of a quintic monomial. So degree five quintic, f of x equals two x to the fifth, Quintic because the highest degree is 5, and a monomial because it only has one term. Two terms, we call that polynomial a binomial. Three terms, we call that a trinomial. If we have more than three terms, then we're just going to go back to polynomial of four terms. So it doesn't have a special name. We're just going to call it a polynomial of the number of terms. So five terms would be a polynomial of five terms, and n terms would be a polynomial of n terms. So let's practice naming a polynomial by its number of terms and degree. So our first step here is to write the polynomial functions in standard form. Then we're going to identify the degree. And lastly, we'll identify the name that depends on the number of terms. So the polynomial that we have is 7x plus 3x plus 5. 7x plus 3x is 10x. So I'm simplifying that first. 10x plus 5 is in standard form. We write the highest degree first and work our way down to the constant. It is a degree one. Which is a linear polynomial. And the number of terms that has two terms. So two terms is called a binomial. So this would be a linear binomial. I'm going to write the whole thing out. 10x plus 5 is standard form, and it is a linear binomial. And that's my final answer. And that answers everything that the directions asked us to answer. Okay, next example, 2m squared plus 7m minus 3. I don't have to simplify that. There's no like terms. So in descending order would be standard form. So the second power comes first. Then my linear term, which is a first power, comes second. And then I end with a constant. This is a degree 2. A degree 2 is called a quadratic. And three terms, one, two, three terms, is a trinomial. Okay, the next, next one is for you to try. Negative x to the fourth plus 3x squared. Press pause, and then I'll provide the answer when you come back. Okay, this two is already written in order 
from highest degree to lowest degree, so negative x to the fourth plus 3x squared. That is a degree 4, which is a quartic, and it has two terms, so it's a quartic binomial. Okay, next example, we have three terms, which is a trinomial, and we have four terms, which is a polynomial of four terms. I'm going to be subtracting the two. So I drop the parentheses on the first polynomial, and then I distribute the negative. Let me do this in red. I'm going to distribute the negative to each term within the parentheses so that I subtract all of it. So I'll have positive 5x cubed minus 9x squared plus 8x minus 19. I've got 3x cubed that combines with 5x cubed. That's going to give us 2x cubed. And then we have 7x squared minus 9x squared is negative 2x squared. And then I've got 8x all by itself. So that would be positive 8x. And then we have negative 8 minus 19, which is negative 27. So from highest degree, all the way down to the constant. This is a degree three. A degree three is called a cubic polynomial. And this is a cubic polynomial of four terms. Okay, the next example we have multiplication. So we have x plus 3 times 4x minus 1 times 3x plus 7. I need to multiply these three together. I'm going to start with the first two. So I'll multiply those first two together. The first terms for FOIL would be x times 4x, which is 4x squared. Then I'm going to have the outer term is negative 1x. The inner terms, positive 12x, so that's going to give me plus 11x. And then positive 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So this term right here, this, this factor rather, these two factors multiplied together turned out to be that trinomial. And now I need to multiply that times 3x plus 7. So I'm going to use what we call the box method. And I'm going to put the trinomial on top, 4x squared plus 11x minus 3. And then across the side, vertically, I'll have 3x plus 7. And it's very helpful to include the signs, especially when they're positive, not just negative. And then I'm just going to make a box. And I'm going to pretend like each one of these boxes has an area. And you find the area of a little rectangle by taking the length times the width. So I'll have 3x times 4x squared is 12x cubed. Then I'll have 3x still times 11x which is 33x squared. And then 3x times negative 3 is negative 9x. 7 times 4x squared is 28x squared. 7 times 11x is 77x. And 7 times negative 3 is negative 21. So diagonally, I have like terms. So when I get my final answer, I have 12x cubed plus 61x squared. 33 plus 28 is 61. 
plus 68x, 77 minus 9 is 68, minus 21. That highest degree, it's written in standard form from highest degree to lowest degree, which is, would be a constant. And the highest degree is a cubic degree. So that would be a cubic polynomial of four terms because anything greater than three terms does not have a special name. So we just call it a cubic polynomial of four terms. Okay, here's one for you to try. Press pause and then go ahead and press play. And I'll show you how to get that answer if you are a little stuck. Okay, welcome back. This first term is connected by multiplication, which means I have to distribute the x. So x times x is x squared, and then x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Then this next term, we are subtracting. So I have to distribute the negative, so I have negative 4x squared minus 1. Now my like terms are x squared and negative 4x squared. That gives me a negative 3x squared. Then I have minus 3x and then minus 1. So that's my polynomial in descending order. It's a degree 2 polynomial, so that's called a quadratic. And it has three terms, so that is a trinomial. So we have a quadratic trinomial. Okay, another example, we have 3 minus z to the fifth, and that's all divided by 3. Now, the parentheses might freak you out a little bit, so typically you see something like this. And many times we want to cancel out those 3s, but we cannot do that because this 3 is connected to both terms in the numerator. This is all divided by 3. So the entire numerator divided by 3. So if I do want to separate it out, I would have 3 over 3 minus z to the fifth over 3. And then I can simplify that to be 1 minus 1 third z to the fifth. This is not in descending order. So I'm going to write negative 1 third z to the fifth first. So I'm going to write my highest degree, and then I'll write the constant. That is a degree 5, which is quintic, and it is two terms, so we call that a binomial. So this is a quintic binomial. So th this is largely review. We've done a lot of subtracting and adding of polynomials and multiplying. So hopefully it's a helpful review. What we're adding to it is writing it in descending order and then identifying it by its degree and number of terms. And those have special names. Now end behavior of a polynomial. We're used to our parabolas that either open up or open down. That's a degree two. We're also used to our linear functions, which is a degree one. We're gonna be adding more functions to our, our bank of parent functions. Right now we know that we have degree one and degree two, and we can tell what's happening to the end. When it says end behavior, it wants to know what's happening on the ends. So what are the ends doing? What's the left end doing? What's the right end doing? What's the left end doing? What's the right end doing? Well, on even degree, an even degree, an example of that even degree would be our degree two, y equals x squared. That's an even degree. y equals x to the fourth is an even degree polynomial. 
y equals x to the sixth is another example of an even degree polynomial. And what's happening on those polynomials is, in this case, let's do one case over here. So in this case, I've got maybe something like this happening. Both ends are rising. So both ends rise is what we say, both ends rise. And an example of this would be a positive coefficient with an x to an even power when written in standard form. So I might have other terms that follow, but when I'm written in standard form, the highest degree always comes first. And when that highest degree is even and you have a positive coefficient, so your leading coefficient is positive, both ends will rise. If I have a negative leading coefficient, but I still have an even degree polynomial, then what's happening there is both ends are falling. So you might have something like that happening but both ends will definitely fall. Now, this is our leading coefficient. So I'm gonna write leading coefficient is positive. And here, I'm gonna write the leading coefficient is negative. When you have an odd degree polynomial, so if you have a degree one, a degree two, or three rather, degree three, so sorry, degree one, degree three, degree five, with a positive leading coefficient, in standard form, that first term is going to have the highest degree of the polynomial, and it will be an odd value. That means that the left end is falling, and the right end is rising. So left falls, right rises. Left falls, right rises. If I have that odd degree polynomial, with a leading negative coefficient, then the left end rises and the right end falls. Left rises, right falls. So on an even degree polynomial, on an even degree polynomial, the ends are doing the same thing. They're either both rising or they're both falling. On an odd degree polynomial, the ends are doing different things. Either the left is falling and the right is rising, or the left rises and the right falls. Now we're gonna come back and we're gonna be a little bit more specific about how to write left falls, right rises, but right now, it's more important that we just know what's happening to the ends. So here's our first example, y equals x squared plus five. We know that this is a quadratic that's shifted up five units. So it looks like that. So visually we can see what's happening, but we don't even really have to graph it. This is going to be an even degree with a positive lead coefficient. So an even degree, ends do the same thing. And with a positive leading coefficient, both rise.
So the left rises and the right rises. On y equals x cubed, x cubed looks like this. So that's what that parent function looks like. This is an odd degree. So the ends do different things. The leading coefficient is positive. Therefore, the left falls and the right rises. Okay, I think that's, that's where this ends right here. This is fantastic. What we're gonna do, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take just a couple more minutes to talk to you about what that left end and right end means. So I've got negative infinity to the left and positive infinity to the right. If I have the left end rising and the right end rising, I'm gonna make my x negative infinity, x positive infinity. There's my left and right. But I also have negative infinity on the lower y-axis and positive infinity on the upper y-axis. So what's happening as I go to the left? As x goes to negative infinity, what is y doing? Is y going up to positive infinity or down to negative infinity? So as my graph goes to the left, this is going up to positive infinity. So as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to positive infinity. That's my left end. On the right end, what's happening on the right here. On the right end, as x goes to positive infinity, so as I go to the right, this means as I go to the right, x goes to positive infinity. What's happening to y? y is going up, and up it would be positive infinity. So you can see both rise. Left rises, that means y goes to infinity, Right rises, rises means goes to positive infinity. Here's your left part, left and right is your x, left and right is your x. So x going to negative infinity is the left, x going to positive infinity is the right. So this is how to write your end behavior using arrow notation. I'm gonna do another one, this time that's what the ends are doing. So as x goes to negative infinity, y is falling, meaning y goes to negative infinity. The right end means as x goes to positive infinity, that right end is falling y goes to negative infinity. Here's an example of an odd function. We'll say that the left is falling and the right is rising and something's happening in between. So the left is falling, x, goes to the left would be x approaching negative infinity. Falling means that y is dropping, y goes to negative infinity. The right side, so the right end, 
x is going to the right, so x is going to positive infinity. What's happening to y? y is going up to positive infinity, so y approaches positive infinity. Okay, you try this one and see if you can get the arrow notation right. So write this in arrow notation. Who knows what's happening here? But the left is rising and the right is falling. Press pause and then come back for an answer. Okay, welcome back. As x goes to negative infinity, y is going to go to positive infinity. And as x goes to positive infinity, y is going to go to negative infinity. So if you got that, then you've got the arrow notation, and that's what's going to be on your test when we get to this unit exam, is the arrow notation. So we wanna make sure that you've got that down. It really helps to know what the ends are doing. So start with your rising and falling, and then you can transfer it over to arrow notation.